Good morning, good evening, everyone. Where you're at and where you're watching this. Um, I want to talk about a term that is used uh, frequently in the Bible. Not a lot, but some. I know I've often wondered why this term is used over and over in the Bible. It's quite interesting. It's called from the foundation of the world. There are several scriptures that allude to different things as occurring from the foundation of the world. Now this shows the eternality of God. When we speak of the eternality of God, we speak of eternal past, present, and future. God is not set in time. God is an eternal being. There's a scripture in, Ephesians, in Hebrews 4.3, it says, For we which have believed do enter into rest, as he said, as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. That's quite a statement, the foundation of the world. The works were finished from the foundation of the world. What works is he speaking of? The works of Christ were finished from the foundation of the world. You say, well, how can that be? Well, God decreed that Christ would die. And this decree was before creation. Now, there are many other passages that allude to this as well. I'm going to look at a few of them. Matthew 13:35 that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet saying I will open my mouth in parables I will utter things which have been kept secret from the foundation of the world How about 1 Peter 1 20, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. Speaking of Christ, Christ was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. Do you know that uh, in the mind of God, even the blood of the prophets was shed from the foundation of the world. Luke 11.50 That the blood of all the prophets which was shed from the foundation of the world may be required of this generation. Matthew 25.34 Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. That's an awesome statement there. So all of God's elects, all of God's elects have a kingdom that was prepared for them, has been prepared for them from the foundation of the world. And we know Ephesians 1, 4 very, very, uh, we allude to it often according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. Before creation we were chosen in Christ. Revelation 13 8, 8 and all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of the life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. This says that the Lamb was slain from the foundation of the world. Christ was slain before creation. You say, well, that's not true. Christ came and was was killed on the cross. He was crucified on the cross, cruel rug cross, yes, in time. But in the mind of God, it was already a done deal. According to this, he was slain from the foundation of the world.
John 17, 24, Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory which thou hast given me, for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. I think one of the reasons that this term is often used is to show that God is not set in time, he's set in eternity. Revelation 17, 8, The beast that thou sawest was and is not and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition, and they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. If you're one of God's elect, if I'm one of God's elect, our names were written in the book of life before creation. What an awesome thought that is. Well, I'm glad that God is eternal. And 1 Corinthians 3.11 says, For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. You know? And so this eternality of God is sets a different tone to the whole aspect of time, doesn't it? God has um, a different perspective than we have because He's eternal. You know? And He has been, He always has been, He always will be. You know? And <clears throat> it's a uh, awesome, awesome thought to realize that the works were finished from the foundation of the world by God. He created all things, and by Him all things consist. And when we think about this whole aspect of the eternality of God, it just causes us to uh, I mean, have you even thought about heaven itself? Where God resides, Hebrews 1.10, Thou, Lord, in the beginning has laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thine hands. And the heavens are the works of thy hands. No. Isaiah 48, 13, Mine hand also hath laid the foundation of the earth, and my right hand hath spanned the heavens. When I call unto them, they stand up together. Well, 2 Timothy 2, 19, Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having a seal. The Lord knoweth them that are his. Well, um, I think it's important that we keep the right perspective on God and not put Him in a box. Say that He has to do this at this time or He has to do this at this time. Um, we have to realize that God is eternal. And that his, his perspective is an eternal perspective, not a, uh, not a time perspective. He's not locked in time. And um, when 
we think about the from the foundation of the world that whole concept is before creation before God even created the earth we were chosen in Christ and it says that the works were finished from the foundation of the world the works were finished they were already completed in the mind of God the decree was already set A lot of people want to talk about eschatology and when Christ is coming back and all that. The point is, is that um, God has already accomplished all the objectives that He has set forth. You know, and in the mind of God, it was all completed before the foundation of the world was, before the before before the earth was even formed. It was already purposed in the mind of God, all events that would happen if you take the scripture that says that all the works were completed, you know. Let's look again at Hebrews 4.3. For we which have believed do enter into rest, as he says, I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. Well, what a beautiful, beautiful thought. There's no ifs, ands, or buts with God. You know, the blood of all the prophets which was shed from the foundation of the world, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. Come, you blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. So this is something to think about, the study of God's eternal nature, his eternal decrees, his immutability of his counsel, and his attributes, the fact that he's omnipotent, he's omniscient, he's omnipresent, he's immutable, he's eternal. May God be with you. Today is my prayer.